Greetings everyone, I'm out here in the uh, Redwood Forest. This is uh, Bear Tracker Nature Films. And today we're looking at some very small burrows that are found in the forest floor. Um, these, this burrow is about half an inch across. I'm zoomed way in so you can see it. Um, one thing that you notice about this burrow is that it sticks up from the ground level. It's maybe an eighth to a quarter of an inch tall here, sticking above the ground level. And uh, the other thing that's interesting about it is these needles that are stuck to it. These are Douglas fir needles, but look closely and you can see that they are stuck in the edges of the burrow in sort of a pattern. And this animal creates this burrow. Um, it lives in there and it hunts from there also. Um, this animal is a turret spider and it's named because obviously this is the turret that they build um, at the entrance to their burrow. Whoops. So as I just accidentally poked it there, what you could tell because it was rather elastic is that this turret is made out of web, spider web. Um, that's how you can tell this type of burrow from another creature out here that makes a similar burrow or of similar size. Um, and that is the tiger beetle. So this one belongs to a turret spider. And sometimes if you stick a little pine needle down there, you can coax them out. I don't know if it's going to work since I just kind of poked his burrow, but let's see if I can coax it out. Kind of tickle inside the burrow and see if it'll come up here. Doesn't always work. Just something to make the spider think there's prey there. But since I'm making so much noise, probably not going to work. Anyway, there's your turret spider burrow. Okay, seen here from the side, you can see that this burrow actually is stuck. It's uh, sticking up above the ground level. So that's one way to differentiate these from your tiger beetle larva, which I'll show you in a moment. But this right here, it's sticking up from the ground level. I'll show you a better example. This is not necessarily the tallest burrow that I've ever found. Um, it's relatively short and it doesn't have much decoration. A lot of times they have way more decoration than this. So I'll try to find a better example. But there's one example of a uh, turret spider burrow. So here's a nice example of a tiger beetle larvae hole. And the larva lives in here. Um, and the larva has rather a round shaped head. And it comes up to the top here and just sits right below the top and balances itself in this, this uh, burrow waiting for a prey animal to come by. So it could be an ant or some other small invertebrate that walks by here. But as soon as it walks by, the little larva will pop out and grab it and take it down inside and eat it. So the size of this little burrow, put a ruler next to it, there's one centimeter. So not much over five millimeters in diameter. Um, so the reason that you can tell this is not the uh, tiger beetle, I mean the, uh, excuse me, the turret spider, is because the tiger beetles, they um, bring the soil out from below. And so notice the lip of this thing is very smooth. And the other thing you don't see is any webbing. So lack of webbing, there's no decorations that are adhered to this, and it doesn't stick up much above the ground surface. In this case, it does slightly, just because of where this is. It's kind of on a little uneven surface here. Um, and also the edge of this rim is relatively smooth, and that's because the larva comes in and out of there. It, uh, when it pops out, it um, smooths the edge. So just the action of its body going past there smooths it. A lot of times when you find these, you'll also find little pellets of soil around them. Now right now there aren't any because it's rained, 
but what happens is the larva takes the soil from inside as it digs out and flicks it out the, the hole. So you'll see anywhere from right next to it to two, three, four inches away, you'll see a little pile of, of little dirt clods that have been thrown out by the larva. There's another hole right next to this. Let me get the camera to focus on that one. So here's another tiger beetle hole right next to that first one. It's maybe an inch, inch and a half away from the first one. And again on this one you can see that the entrance is relatively smooth and there's no decorations. You also don't see any webbing on these because this is not made by a spider. This is made by the larva of the tiger beetle. So the turret spider you remember showed a lot of decoration. It, it had leaves and things adhered to the edge. And you could also tell that the turret itself was made out of webbing. This one's pretty obviously made out of mud. And um, the animals in there, I don't know if I can coax it to come out or not. Same with the tiger, uh, with the turret spider. It may not want to come out. But you can always try. Just gently poking a stick down there so it thinks maybe there's some prey. Usually doesn't work when I'm making noise. But this is the burrow of a tiger beetle larva. Here we're looking at a different tiger beetle larva burrow. And this one is kind of cool because it's uh, got these little dirt clods next to it. These here. And there's a lot more that are scattered outside the camera's range. Maybe I can move some in here. Um, these dirt clods came from inside this burrow. So what happens is the little larva that's in there will toss these dirt clods out as it enlarges the burrow. Notice the burrow here has the uh, uh, sloping or smooth edged hole opening, um, which is different from that of the turret spider that you already saw. But um, those little dirt clods are made when the larva tosses them out. Um, and that's just a way of it enlarging its burrow. Now these burrows can indicate the size, I mean the, uh, the instar of the larva. I'll show you a study that um, documents this. So as the larva grows, it goes through different instars where it molts and becomes a larger um, creature. And uh, as that happens, it makes a bigger burrow. So not all of these burrows are going to be the same size. And you'll find them often in clusters. They seem to be rather colonial in nature. Um, in this particular location where I am, there's at least a dozen of these holes. And they're all different sizes. Some are smaller than this. Um, and the one I originally showed you was bigger than this. So uh, as the larva goes through its different instars, the burrow size will enlarge and the width of this opening will enlarge. So that study that I showed you indicated how the width of the opening can help you determine which instar the larva is in. So here's the approximate size. I'm using a, a centimeter scale here. Camera might not focus on it, but that's maybe five millimeters or so. Not really huge. It's quite small actually. These two smaller tiger, tiger beetle larval burrows are not far away from the other one. They're a couple feet away, but they're quite a bit smaller. So here's that scale again. These ones are maybe three or four millimeters, not very big. So this is a smaller burrow and indicates a younger instar of the tiger beetle. Here's another one to show you once again the little clods of dirt that have been tossed outside of the hole. Sometimes these are as much as four to six inches away from the entrance to the burrow. These ones just happen to be really close. Um, it rained a couple days ago, so maybe they're uh, busy moving some mud out of their burrows that got in during the rain, or maybe they're just enlarging it. But uh, anyway, that's uh, tiger beetle larva burrows, and it's just another interesting thing you can find out in the redwood forest.